Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Pen Habit. I am Matt Armstrong, as I always am. And I'm glad to have you back for another pen review video. Uh, in today's pen review video, we're going to be taking a look at the 2015 special edition Pelican M205 Amethyst. This is a, uh, a special edition pen that goes along with the ink of the year that Pelican Edelstein puts out. This year, it's a beautiful purple color with some red undertones called Amethyst. It was part of a contest that they had where you got to use a color creator on their website and then um, name the ink. It goes along with the gemstone line that they have been putting out in the Edelstein line for a while. So I'm very excited. This is my first time using the smaller 200 series Pelicans. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it compares with the, uh, the larger Pelicans that I have and like quite a bit, my M1000, M800s, and M600. So uh, let's dive in, shall we? Um, comes in this little white box, pretty standard for Pelican pens. Take the, uh, the box, the little cardboard sleeve off, and you get this kind of slide-out pen coffin in the silvery brown with Pelican on top, and then it just slides open like such to expose a faux leather white penvelope. Um, and then you've got a little bit of tissue paper and the Pelican booklet has all of the, the warranty information in it in a bunch of different languages. Pretty simple packaging. That's not uncommon for Pelican's uh, pens. They don't tend to go crazy with the packaging, and that's just fine with me. Um, the pen itself, which I just put away, the pen itself Pull the little, uh, oh, and I just totally got it all knotted up, so uh, comes in this package. So here is the pen itself. It's uh, got the little tag that says Amethyst 205. Now, for those who aren't familiar with Pel the modern Pelican's naming system, I'm not an expert on this by any means, but my understanding is uh, if it has a, it, so the numbering goes M205, which is a steel nib pen, uh, the small size. Then there's an M400, which I don't own, also a small sized pen, um, but it comes with a gold nib. Then you have the M600, which is slightly larger, also with a gold nib. An M800, which is larger still, with also with a gold nib. And the M1000, also with a gold nib. And this is the largest. This is kind of their flagship pen. Now, one thing to point out, you'll notice these. this is an M600, M800, M1000. All of those pens end with a zero. If, uh, if it ends with a five, as does the M205, the difference is that the trim on this is silver colored. So I have an M805 Stressemann, which also has silver colored uh, appointments on it. So if you're looking at a Pelican, M200, M400, same size pen, one's a steel, one's a gold nib. Uh, and, uh, and then you can tell from that last digit if it's a five or a zero, whether it is a silver or gold trim. Anyway, here is the M205. Kind of go through the design. At the top, you have got a black medallion with the white uh, Pelican logo on it got that kind of chiseled edge, which is a design feature of basically every Pelican pen for a long time. The Pelican bill clip here comes down. Very uh, cylindrical design on the cap. It says Germany and Pelican right around the cap band. Then the pen comes down. You, you can see it's semi-translucent plastic, so it is, it's very, um, it's a very, Nice purple color, almost toward the lavender side of purple, but you can kind of see through it, so you can see your ink levels. Got a little washer here and then a piston knob at the end. I will go ahead and remove the cap, screws off, and let's, uh, let's do the cap so it is less than a full turn to take the cap off. Underneath, you have a, you know, kind of a, a slightly tapered section with a little flare at the end a steel nib with the Pelican logo, and this happens to be a fine nib, and then a plastic feed. Uh, 
Uh, and the nibs between the M200 and M400 are interchangeable. So at some point, if you decided you really, really needed to have this uh, with a gold nib, you could buy an M400 gold nib and swap it out. Uh, and with most Pelican pens, to my knowledge, certainly the modern ones, the nib units just screw out and then you can just put a new one in this place. As I mentioned earlier, this is a piston filler. Um, it holds a decent amount of ink, but not a lot because this isn't a terribly large nib. Um, or a large barrel, rather. Uh, it, the workings of the piston filler are plastic. In the M800 and M1000 in Pelican series, they're generally made of metal, not plastic. So it does give it a little bit more heft. As it is, this is a fairly light pen. The pen does post and posts pretty securely, which makes it uh, quite writable, I find. Um, so feels a little too light in the hand for my personal tastes, but it's not super uncomfortable when it's posted. So overall, nice pen, a little, despite the purple color, and I, I've often bemoaned the lack of, of good purple pens out there. Uh, this is a nice purple. It's a little more lavendery than I was hoping. I was hoping for something a little bit richer, a little bit deeper in color than this. Um, something that would go a little bit more along with what I hoped the ink would look like as well. Um, it's not a bad color. It's just not quite the shade of purple that I like. And purple's a tricky color for me because you got to get it just right. Um, so let's go ahead and do the measurements. I will walk you through the writing and then we'll talk a little bit about price and value. So let me get my documentation over here. Uh, we are looking at a very svelte 125.5 millimeters in length. And I already showed you some of the other Pelicans, but let me give you a couple of other examples as well. So here is, for comparison, a Lamy All-Star and a Mont Blanc 149. And here's the M1000. I'll slide this out. And the M800. I'm trying to think if there are any other well-known pens that I've got in here at the moment. And just for uh, just for comparison's sake, here is a Aurora Optima. So some very nice pens in that lot, but you can tell this is a, a very, very small pen. It's uh, one of the smaller pens, modern pens in my collection. Uh, which one of the things I like about this pen is even though it's small, it is still a piston filler. You don't get a lot of very small piston fillers, so you do get a decent ink capacity with this pen. If this were not a piston filler, I would be willing to bet that this would not accept full-length converters, but most of Pelican's modern pens are uh, piston fillers. Okay, so it is 125.5 in length, Uncapped, it is 121.5. So if you grip it down at the very edge of the section, um, it's it's still pretty good in the hand here. I tend to grip it a little bit further up, at which point it works, but it feels a lot more balanced if it's posted for me. Uh, in my hand, this is a pen that likes to be posted. And uh, it is 149 millimeters in length when it is posted. Middle of the section, you're looking at 9.8 millimeters, so a little bit narrower than I generally like. My problem with this section in particular is that it is so short. If the section went up to about here, I'd feel a lot better about it because then I could hold it right in the middle of the section. But as it is, I, I have to write at such a, a high angle if I hold the pen on the section, which I don't like holding it that high. I generally tend to hold my pen around a 45 degree angle as opposed to like a 60 or 65 degree angle. So um, this is a very small section, which I'm not, not narrow, but very short section, which I'm not a really big fan of. Uh, in terms of the barrel, you're looking at 12 millimeters at the widest point of the barrel and 13.3 millimeters at the widest point of the cap. And then, as I mentioned, it's a very light pen at only 9 grams without the cap and 15 grams with. So if you like a light pen, this is a very well-built, solid pen that is, that is on the light side. So, enough of talking about the pen. Let me go ahead and do a little bit of writing, tell you how it writes, and then we'll talk price and value. So, this is the Pelican M. 205 Amethyst. 
I have a, it's a fine, I almost wrote medium, fine steel nib. And the ink is, fittingly enough, Pelican Edelstein Amethyst. Okay, your quote. Okay, so as a writer, I find the Pelican M205 to be in keeping with what my, my previous experiences with Pelican pens, which is to say, uh, generally pretty good writers, smooth but not overly so, a touch on the wet side, although it is a bit hard to tell with this pen in terms of wetness, because this is a fine nib as opposed to some of their other nibs. And it does tend to write a little bit on the wide side for fine, which does tend to be pretty standard among most of the Pelican pens that I have tried. So it's moderately wet, a little on the slightly wet side of moderate, but if this were a medium or a broad nib, I suspect it would be quite a bit wetter. Uh, as a fine nib, it is on the slightly wet side of fine. Uh, in terms of line variation, you can coax a little out, but this certainly is not what the nib was intended to do. Um, I have not had any problems with skipping hard starts. I've never had a problem with ink starvation on any Pelican pen I have ever used. Uh, I will say, though, that this is probably one of the least smooth Pelican experiences that I have ever had. The tines on this nib were out of alignment when I got it, um, and I, I did buy it brand new. Fortunately, aligning tines is a, a minor thing, and if you're into fountain pens at all, you either know how to do this, or you really, really, really should learn how to do it, because you're going to get fountain pens where the tines are out of alignment all the time. All the way up the chain from the most expensive pen to the cheapest pen, because it's really easy to knock, knock a tine out of alignment if you cap it roughly or things like that. So this was slightly out of alignment, very easy fix, and now it's a good writer. I have not smoothed it with micro mesh or anything like that. Uh, in terms of feedback, it does give some feedback. Uh, not a whole lot, but I'd say on a scale of 1 to 10, we're talking maybe a 4. Uh, it is pleasant feedback, certainly, and I think it is assisted by the fact that this is a fine nib as opposed to a medium or, or a broad. I would probably get less feedback if it were one of those. Uh, if we're going to talk reverse writing here, pretty good. A bit scratchy on the horizontal strokes, which is a pretty, co especially going this direction, which is a pretty common occurrence. Very dry, much finer line, as you can see there. Um, so yeah, it's a very consistent, solid rider. It's very well built. All the parts feel well made. I've never heard of a lot of problems with Pelican, especially these all plastic Pelicans cracking or breaking or any of those things that you sometimes hear from other, other pen manufacturers. It is a well built pen that will write for you every time. If you like purple, especially this kind of lilac-y, almost dusty-ish purple, I think you'll really like this. Um, the one thing I will say is this pen is a little too expensive for what you get, in my opinion. So the pen retails in the U.S. for $140. It is a special edition, so it will only be available, it's going to be made through 2015, and then after 2015, they're going to stop making it. So prices on these will probably you know, stay about the same, and then for people who really, really want one of these special editions, you might 
they might go up a little bit, but don't ever buy a pen as an investment, buy it to use it. I think pens are very bad investments. <laughs> I will go on record as saying, I don't think you should use, I don't think pens should be part of your retirement strategy. Uh, you will never, you will almost never make your money back, let alone uh, make more. There are a few cases where that will be the case, but most of the time, no. Um, so at $140, you have to look at this pen in comparison to some other pens in that same price range. Uh, so I, I find this mostly comparable to something like a Platinum 3776 or a Pilot Custom 74. The big differentiator on those being they have gold nibs. Now, I'm not one of those, a pen needs to have a gold nib kind of, kind of people, but all things being equal, I like the Platinum 3776 just a little bit more than this. It certainly fits my hand better. This is a little too small for me. Um, so I would, I would probably, I'm probably not going to keep this pen. Um, but uh, it, it's a very good writer, but it's just too small for my hands. So I would prefer the Platinum or the Pilot uh, in this same price range. In the same price range, you also get things like the Edison, any of the Edison's production line pens, any of Franklin Christoph's production line pens, which are going to be, those will have steel nibs as well, but those are going to be a little bit more customized, different unique designs, different unique materials. This is just a clear plastic acrylic. I don't find it particularly exciting. So all in all, it's a very nice pen. If you love purple pens, this is one you really ought to, and, and you've got smaller hands, this is one you want to consider getting. If not, eh, I'm, I'm kind of lackluster about it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Now, you want to talk about a Pelican I love? The M800 with my oblique broad nib and the brown tortoise? I love me that Pelican. So I've got nothing against the brand. It's just this particular pen doesn't really do it for me. So that has been my review of the Pelican M205 Amethyst, the 2015 special edition. Uh, thank you very much for watching. As always, you can leave comments below or over at penhabit.com. The link in the description below, there'll be extra photos and, and the written blog post to go along with this video uh, and an ability to leave comments there. And you can find me on social media as always as well. We will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Oh, and I just totally got it all knotted up, so... Jeez. Well, that was special. Let me show you about the pen, show you what I like about it, and uh, give you a little bit of a writing sample. And I just totally sounded like Stephen Brown there. Tell you what I like, tell you what I don't like, then we'll do a writing sample. Like Stephen Brown. Now all I need is a good British accent to go along with it. Or Danish accent, I guess. Danish, British, both. Anyway. Scrap it all, start over.